Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with a preview of Thursday Night Football this week. The New York Giants visiting the Washington Redskins and what I think is honestly a little bit of a bore of a football team. Honestly, if you go back to week one, uh, the New York Giants opened up against the Detroit Lions on Monday Night Football and I openly trashed this team saying that this was probably more than likely going to be the worst season of New York Giants football out there. I apologize to all the Giants fans out there that uh, just saying that basically Tom Coughlin was basically going to screw up the New York Giants offense and um, it was going to be another horrible season after last year's 0-6 start to the year. I predicted that they would probably more than likely have the same sort of start. I, I didn't I didn't say they were going to go winless, but honestly I was a little bit surprised by last, uh, last week's win against the Houston Texans team. A team that I think that honestly um, was exposed as, as one of its weakest point of its team is Fitzpatrick as its quarterback. Um, I, I don't know if uh, Mallet is the uh, the answer in Houston, but honestly, I like him more, so that's the guy that I'm really pushing for. You've seen with Houston, Andre Johnson really hasn't had the uh, the season that he's had in seasons past, and I don't know if that's because of his uh, pretty much whole off-season holdout, trying to get out of Houston, trying to find another winning situation uh, that basically would be, uh, be better for him. But this isn't about Houston. This is about the Giants and the Redskins. Everybody's been talking about Kirk Cousins taking over the Washington Redskins, even if you go to the offseason. A lot of people thought that after um, RG3 was deactivated for the last three games, just mainly because the uh, the Redskins didn't want to see him get injured more than he already was and wanted to save up for next season. Cousins came in. Uh, he was a guy that they uh, selected in the draft a few years ago. I believe it was the same. No, it was the year after RG3's uh, draft, and a, a lot of people were sort of questioning, why would you go out and pick another quarterback? Um, when you already have RG3, who had got hurt in that year's playoffs after uh, taking his uh, team in his rookie season of the playoffs, he sort of, you know, went back in after already being injured and got injured more. Maybe some people were thinking that maybe Washington thought that RG3 was, was honestly more injured than he's saying he, he was. But uh, look and see. I mean, RG3, an, another injury, you know, the ankle injury this year, he's going to be out for a little bit, and Kirk Cousins take, uh, takes over. A lot of Redskins fans that were out there that believed in RG3 were honestly hoping that Cousins would get traded so you wouldn't have some sort of a uh, quarterback controversy. Uh, but honestly, um, you know, he's taking the reins and uh, he hasn't really let up. And uh, they're uh, running with a good football team. I mean, they're putting up uh, 400 uh, yards of offense a game. They're, they're rushing... Uh, uh, for over 100 yards a game, and uh, they, they've looked pretty nice. They, they didn't get the win against Philadelphia, uh, but they were able to spread the ball around. I think everybody got to see uh, Deshaun Jackson sort of put himself above uh, the team, you know, basically making the big dramatic play out of scoring his, his, his touchdown against his former team and, and sort of made that like his own little personal goal. Uh, but the Redskins, honestly, are getting a lot of offense out of uh, Pierre Gar Garçon, uh, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, he probably doesn't have as many receptions as I thought he was going to have when he first got there, and being held to only one touchdown uh, isn't there. But uh, they're, they're getting a lot of offense out of Alfred Morris out of the backfield, 253 yards. I'm picking the Washington Redskins to win this game. Lots of talk about this being the uh, the last week of uh, the New York Giants captain. Uh, no, no, well, the New York Yankees captain, I guess you could say, and Derek Jeter in, in his last few games as the Yankees is retiring, riding off into the sunset, and people saying that Eli Manning is going to be the biggest star uh, in uh, in New York uh, sports out there. He's going to be the new captain of New York, pretty much, and uh, Eli, I, I think he had a bad season last year, definitely having more touchdowns, um, or no, more interceptions and touchdowns definitely hurt him. And uh, the changing of the the uh, the West Coast offense, which him you know trying to have to to pass more to be able to save this team when he's honestly uh, never really had a high completion rate as a quarterback as well. I think that Eli Manning you know lived off that strong arm that he had. He liked to bomb it out, and uh, you know when he completed the pass, it was a big gain, and, and there was a lot of times he didn't. I think that Eli Manning is more than likely. Uh, somewhere in the range of a uh, a sixty percent passer over his career, and um, you know he, them trying to get more um, completions out of him with a shorter range, I, I don't think he's honestly going to help him out. But uh, they got the win last week. They were able to beat Houston. That was on the the feet of uh, Rashard Jennings, who ran for one hundred and seventy five yards. Um, way boosting his average, but they were able to spread the ball around. Victor Victor Cruz finally found the uh, the end zone for the first time since week four uh, last year. Richard Jennings, uh, very low completions this year, but um, 
I don't know. No way in the world am I picking the Giants to win this game. I'll take the Redskins, but honestly, I don't think this game's going to be very good. It's, it's more than likely one that you could probably miss this season and, and go out and watch something else unless you're just really diehard uh, Giants or Redskins fan. I, 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 You know, people have been overreacting. Uh, week 1 was huge. Of course, that was the first real football game of the NFL season. Week 2 dropped, and then Week 3 dropped even more. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised with this ranking of two teams out there that nobody really cares about. We see another drop in the Thursday night ratings, but the NFL doesn't have anything to worry about. As soon as you get a big-time game up there, everybody's going to be tuning in. Peace out, everybody.